I am standing in front of family court Saket in which I just stepped out of my matter where you know I've been dealing for the past few months with this one particular case where a divorce petition was filed by a wife several years ago in which she also sought interim maintenance uh, after about 2 years of filing the interim maintenance application when the matter came up for arguments for deciding the quantum of interim maintenance at that point of time the learned presiding officer my client tells me i wasn't there my client tells me that the judge threatened uh, you know couldn't say threatened but warned the the client husband client that if you do not agree yourself to grant some interim maintenance you don't concede to some interim maintenance for the wife i will fix a very very heavy amount and the husband client kept telling the judge that i have all of this proof i am trying to show my lord i have this information that confirms that my wife is earning quite a lot of money she has hidden all of these things in her income affidavit you know back then they used to be uh, income affidavits uh, in in line with the judgment of kusum sharma of the delhi high court now since the past few months almost a year or two it's been um, rajneesh versus neha judgment and and you know the wife had not given any of these details the husband kept saying ask her for these details you know she's not given her bank account details she's, so many things are not there the judge said i don't care if you don't concede yourself to give some maintenance amount i'm going to fix a very very heavy amount the client at that moment conceded and agreed to a particular amount which was also even at that point of time well beyond his budget several years later some 2 3 4 more years later the client was able to get his hands on concrete evidence showing that not only was his wife working at the time she filed this petition but soon thereafter she was able to travel abroad and since then she's been living residing uh, working uh, very very handsomely abroad uh, and and yet the client still had to pay this amount he of course moved his applications for alteration he moved a perjury petition he did a bunch of things but it's very sad to say there has been several months several years of efforts on the client side several months of efforts on my side the matter is reserved for orders by the learned court uh, you know we are hopeful that justice will be done at least at this interim stage but so much of damage has already been done a lot of money has already been paid an application has been moved for a refund of that amount as well god knows what's going to happen but this is one lesson for every husband in matrimonial matters that if the court which is either the magistrate court under the domestic violence act or if it's the family court judge or maybe you know in in a in an anticipatory bail application the sessions court judge right this is what happened as well recently one of my associates were telling me in one of his matters uh, the client the client had applied for anticipatory bail and the sessions court judge in an anticipatory bail application uh told the told the husband that if you do not immediately pay 50 lakh rupees to your wife and settle the matter in 50 lakh rupees which was an atrocious sum of money considering the situation of the parties if you do not pay this 50 lakhs i will send you to jail i you know it's completely absurd but this happens very very often in in matrimonial litigations be it anticipatory bail applications be it uh, you know section 125 crpc interim maintenance applications be it interim application under the hindu marriage act or these other provisions be it under the domestic violence act the judges will almost always try to pressure you and the reason why judges want to do this is because they try they think that mia bv situation is there it is not going to be the end of the world if the wife gets maybe a little more money than what she had uh, than what she you know would actually deserve from a court of law and that's why they feel that this is something that can be done but you know at the biggest reason the judges do this is because they think that uh, they think that they want to reduce their workload because otherwise they will have to go through the contentions of the parties they will have to go through the income affidavits and everything else and then come to a just decision and to avoid all of this they they adopt this tactic which i don't agree with which is to to tell the husband in very very strong words that if you do not do this xyz thing i will take this abc step against you and on most occasions this is something that the judge does not follow through with i would say around 1% of the times the judge will actually do what he is threatening the client of doing a couple of months ago a very similar thing happened the client you know we approached to the sessions court 
we applied for anticipatory bail. The Sessions Court judge said, I will dismiss the anticipatory bail application if you immediately do not re uh, return the jewellery of the wife. To which I said, my lord, she has already taken all of her jewellery. How do I convince my lord? What proof do I have of the fact that she has already taken her jewellery? And she claims that, no, this jewellery is, uh, is with my husband and his um, family members. And again, the judge you know, tried to kind of push it down my throat, the council's throat. I said I have no instructions because my instructions are the wife has the jewellery. To which the judge then ultimately postponed, adjourned the matter. And when I again argued the matter on merits, the jewellery aspect did not come up and ultimately anticipatory bail was granted. So on a lot of occasions you'll have, you know, you'll have good days, bad days, but majority of the times I would say that it would be a good bet, it would be a good bet to not fall into the demands of the judge who is pressurizing you or threatening you or saying that if you don't do this I will do this XYZ thing against you and you politely request the judge to pass an order on the merits instead because if you if you concede to something then it becomes a consent order then it becomes very difficult to appeal it either you'll have to again approach the court for setting it aside and it becomes a debacle for at least another two or three years up until which you'll still be say for example in this case end up paying substantial amounts of maintenance to your spouse so this is something these are some of these thoughts that i have which you can contemplate on